In this video, you get to tag along with me, Jens. If you haven't watched my videos, I'm a free ski coach and ski instructor, so my skiing is pretty good. I do love ski touring, but I'm not used to conquering any mountains higher than 3000 meters. So in this video, you get to see what my experience is like and some lessons I learned along the way. Enjoy. Wow. So I've spent some hours trying to pack. Uh, according to Dave's checklist he sent me, he ticked many boxes. Oh, two spare layers. Tick. I got a few things. Axe, two crampons. So I'm bringing a little bit too much of everything. The skis, they got the skins on already. I got far too much nuts, dried mango, a couple of protein bars, three sausages, long sleeve t-shirt, short sleeve t-shirt, ski jacket, puffer, a little hoodie, ski pants, thin gloves, thicker gloves, sleeping thing, climbing harness, 30 meters of cord, uh, so there's some rope there, crampons, ski crampons, helmet goggles, ski little axe, covid test, gopro lenses, one or two rx 100s, I don't think so, I just don't know how much water I, I will need, but, but what I do know is that I'm very excited, and I'm going to take uh, Dave's advice on what to reduce, what to keep, what to get rid of. Anyway, now i got to stop driving to Chamonix. So excited. Ah, it feels good to be packed and in the car. And uh, I'm about to drive over the Oberland Pass. Love a good road trip. More fun when you're with friends, but I got some snacks and coffee, podcast, so I'll be fine. Love driving over the Oberal Pass. I've been drooling at the nice lines. Two of my favorite lines of the season. Looks like you can still ride them off uh, the Pits Moran that I really enjoyed. Mm. Fun line, scary to climb up. Come on, fuck me. That was the scariest thing in a while. And uh, Pizza Cavaradi. Had a lot of fun riding those this spring. Yeah, I've just driven an hour and a half and uh, got like three hours left. And I'll be there, excited. This is always exciting. Driving the car onto trains, something they kind of like here in Switzerland. Almost in Chamonix, so excited. Gonna get to see Dave now. Oh, there we go. Just got to Dave's house. Look at that. I like France. Their food, their mountains, I guess. I haven't really skied them before. I'm Dave Searle and I'm a guide based in Chamonix, France. And over the next couple of days, I've got the great pleasure to take my friend Jens on his first 4,000 meter peak and we're going to use skis. It's June, so there's not loads of snow, but I think we're going to have a good time. Good to have you back, man. It's been a few years since we did that ski touring video. Yeah, it has. It must have been like, what, two years ago we did that video, but maybe even three. Maybe even three. I'm yeah. thrilled to be back. Uh, what are we going to climb and ski? Yeah, so we're going to do your first 4,000 meter peak. Yeah. And the objective is the Grand Paradiso, mm -hmm. which is the highest standalone peak fully in Italy. Nice. It's a little over 4,000 meters, so 4,061 meters. And it's like a perfect first 4,000 meter peak and kind of works for skiing pretty well. Mm -hmm. It's probably not the best ski peak out there, but we're going to have a good little bit of skiing. Like the skiing is going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love the enthusiasm. I'm fine with okay. Uh, that'll be great. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to leave here from Chamonix and we're going to drive over to Italy mm -hmm. through the Mont Blanc tunnel. And then we're going to drive to this place here, which is 
uh, Pont de Rue, which is up at the top of the Val Savarange. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a valley that runs off the main Aosta Valley. Uh, and then we're going to walk up it's about 800 meters up to the hut. Very um, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and once we get to the hut, yeah, just going to hang out and uh, get ready for the next day. Uh, I looked at the watch, it's 9th of June. Yeah, this is probably going to be my last ski day of the season. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a very late time to be doing like ski mountaineering peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, but it should still be fine. So, yeah, be I'm happy to do that. On the summit day, what time do you think we'll be getting up then? So we'll probably take breakfast at about four o'clock, something like that. Nice and early. Nice and early, yeah. And then start <laughs> hiking up. It's probably about four hours up to the summit. That's so, it's, mm -hmm. so yeah, not, not loads. Um, and then there's a little summit tour. Which there's a little um, kind of scramble that you do to, to do mm. the summit, which can take a little bit of time if it's a little bit busy. The scramble there, will we rope up for that? Yeah, we'll put a rope on for that. Uh, how are we secured? There's actually some really fancy kind of bolts and bits of gear in there. So yeah, there's a few. A quick draw something. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll leave it to you as a surprise. That sounds awkward to get surprised at uh, 3,900 meters. <laughs> <laughs> almost a small catastrophe this morning there was about this much coffee left in Dave's coffee jar so my caffeine, caffeine needs are not met yet I'm a, I'm a tea drinker man you say it's a breakfast for mountaineers so I'm trying to get into it this part is really easy to get into to be honest mm. then we were driving up the Grand Paradiso National Park. Grand Paradiso! Yeah, we're just in the parking lot and we already see some big beautiful ibex, the king of the Alps. In 1945 there were only 419 remaining and now in this park alone there are about 2,800 living. The boss says we gotta get going. We have that big cloud behind us. This is we gotta hurry up and make it to the hut. More, yeah, walking, less talking, I think he said. <laughs> How is he gonna ski on these? 70 millimeter skis. You need a hundred. Hundred. For the slushy conditions we might have. I really like the idea of strapping the boots to the ski, the ski to the bag, and the skins to the ski. A lot of strapping going on here. Go, last strap. Boom. Yeah, this is the first time I'm carrying the skis like this in a nice A-frame up the mountain, wearing shoes and normal pants. It feels kind of good. Oh well. Walking's walking. Look at that. Wonderful walk. One of the best parts of going mountain exploring with these two guys. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be the weakest, least experienced, least knowledgeable. It'll be great. What's, what's the name of these trees in English? Larch. Larch, yeah, Larch. They, they're sick. They create good skiing conditions because the needles are so acid that they acidify the ground so the trees grow wider apart. I learned that from an old ski movie called Free Radicals many years ago. excited about tomorrow yeah but I noticed this morning you were looking at your gear and reading on your phone like crampons this that do you have checklists 
Yeah, I have a checklist. Um, and if you, you know, it's a really good idea to just make a list of all the little bits that you, you need and uh -huh. just check them off as you, as you pack them into your bag. Yep. Because then you're not going to have any nasty surprises at the hut, like forgetting your skins or something like that. So yeah, yeah make a list and, and check it off. Yeah, really good idea. Is it like one really long list? Uh, a couple of categories, maybe. So like essential things, essential items uh, that you'd always carry. And then other categories I'll have on my list, like if I'm staying in a hut, yeah. for example, or if I'm going to do some proper mountaineering, just a different category for those things and this helps me organize it. Oh, nice. So. Just on 700 vert. It's been pretty tiring, even if we low up. That's been pretty warm. Finally, we got a bit of a mountain breeze. Hopefully, we get some nice Italian food tonight. We'll see. A good time. And soon we're at the snow level. So on the other side, it's snow at my own height. snow just walking on it to touch it a little bit yep it's cold it's wet it's spring corn up there we got the this is the hut i see the roof of the hut nice we're there nice thanks for getting us up here ah well i didn't do all the hard work i ah, we shared that on three but it's good to be here and it looks cool it's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool hut, isn't it? Stone yeah. with aluminium roof. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool eh? I like it here, Dave. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? It's pretty, pretty nice. And that sick little lake there, I almost want to have a dip in it. That'd be wonderful. Oh, it's 2.35. It took two oh. hours, 57 minutes. You said we were going to do this in two hours. How do you feel about this? Yeah, I mean, I think we would have done it in two hours if we hadn't been filming. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Damn it, that water looks so cold. In the next episode, it's getting a bit more real. As we climb up the summit, we learn about how to put on crampons, tying into the rope, and it gets a little breathtaking on the top. See you then. <laughs>